And I mentioned today too, we're going to be talking a little bit about how to get swag at the end of the session. So make sure you stay for that. But let's just jump in. Let's dive in. And let's start talking about how to keep your students' momentum going. Um, so especially now with a lot of you, um, your students may be coming off the classroom quest, which really boosted their engagement and their learning on Duolingo, or at least we hope so, at least we have heard from teachers. So let me know if, if you were involved in the classroom quest. Um, but so how can we keep this momentum going for students as we start entering into the holiday season? Um, luckily, the gamification of Duolingo is going to do a lot of that work for you. So that's a plus. Uh, the features such as streaks, classroom leaderboards, the monthly badge challenges, and other challenges are going to keep a lot of your students learning even throughout their break. Um, and since it feels like a game, it's not going to feel like homework for them. I remember when I was a student, my chemistry teacher in high school actually assigned us a huge stoichiometry packet over winter break. And it was, it was brutal to say the least. Um, I will say that I was able to do stoichiometry equations with a lot more ease afterwards, but given that stress, I would really highly recommend that you not be that teacher. <laughs> Avoid uh, giving a huge packet of, of homework over school break um, and focus on something like Duolingo because Duolingo is not supposed to be stressful for your students. The learning is supposed to be effortless. It's supposed to be fun, um, which is, of course, the exact opposite of a 50 uh, question stoichiometry equation packet. Um, so some additional ways to encourage Duolingo use over school break is to challenge them. So ask them leading up to the break, ask them who is going to keep their streak going throughout the holiday? Who is going to end up on the classroom leaderboard during a week off from school? Who is going to beat me, the teacher, right? So you could start challenging them, start to prep them to kind of challenge them um, in a fun way to see who could uh, who could keep learning and who could uh, learn the most. Um, another way is to reward them. So reward them when they come back. Um, you could be rewarding them with Duolingo dollars, Duolingo dollars. If you have a classroom economy, you could be re rewarding them with um, Duolingo certificates certificates, um, recognizing their work over the break, um, or any other small rewards. So just by congratulating them, recognizing their work um, is going to go a long way. And then lastly, and this may seem a little bit of like opposite advice as to, as to what I'm talking about. We're talking about getting students to be learning over the break, right? But my advice is actually to encourage time to relax. Yes, we want our students to be learning, but also please do recognize that your students, just as yourself, need this time off, right? Um, ask your students in the learning language, perhaps before going on break, um, what exactly they're going to be doing to relax, how are they going to spend their time, have these conversations in the learning language um, leading up to this. Um, maybe even go over some fun relaxation techniques with them beforehand that they could use to unwind and to de-stress. So this advice, as I said, it may seem opposite of keeping up your students' momentum and continuing learning over break, but really we know that the best learning and what is when students are relaxed, happy, and stress-free. So if you want to encourage learning, encourage the break. That is my, my suggestion. Um, we do have some handouts. So I want to drop this uh, handout here that we're seeing in the chat. So I'm dropping it now. Perfect. So there we go. So um, this is what you're seeing on your screen. I just dropped the, the link to it. So you're able to download this, um, this resource and utilize it if you'd like. Um, but these are some other ways that students can sneak some learning in without it feeling like homework. Um, so here are some of our suggestions. So you could be encouraging your students to cook a traditional cultural meal with their families over break. Um, for example, I actually did this over winter break when I was teaching um, I offered my students extra credit uh, to those who cooked a bouche de Noël over the holiday seasons with their family. Um, I did off also offer an alternative activity, an alternate activity that wouldn't involve cooking, um, but rather just looking at the tradition and meaning behind the bouche de Noël and writing up a short summary for those kids who may not have had the means or opportunity to cook with family. I'm going to talk a little bit more about what I mean by that. Um, another example of uh, sneaking some learning in is encouraging your students to watch a movie. So with Netflix and other streaming services, watching foreign films is as easy as ever. 
Um, I would even tell my students that a movie they already know, say, for example, a Disney movie that they know by heart, they've watched for years, um, that's something that could be rewatched in the target language, in the learning language um, for some added practice, as well as um, adding uh, and playing with the subtitles, right? You could be adding uh, the French subtitles if your students are learning French, uh, for example, um, to really help your students with their with their com reading comprehension and listening comprehension. Um, so the benefits that uh, the, the, the fact that the movie is already familiar to students um, is something that's going to really help them make those connections between their um, their native language and their learning language. And then for students who really want to get creative, you could let them write out a script and act it out with friends and share it with you when they are back. Um, especially with TikTok, how our students love making TikToks, for example. I'm not saying it has to be on TikTok, um, but that could be an example of a fun way for your students to be making some fun skits in the learning language. Um, you could even give students the option of acting out one of the Duolingo stories, for example. Um, so those Duolingo stories that they're already interacting with on the, on the path in their class, um, they're able to perhaps act it out and uh, memorize those lines with, uh, with uh, their friends. Um, another example is writing a letter to, um, to you, their teacher, in the learning language. So this could include anything. It could be maybe them describing what their vacation included, what they learned on Duolingo while keeping up with their streak, for example, et cetera. Um, another example is to create a travel plan. So this is really great for students who like to dream about future vacations and opportunities to go abroad, which was me as a student. Um, so you could have your students writing down some useful travel phrases in things to see or do in their country of choice. Um, and another uh, good example for students who love to get creative, uh, those students who love drawing, you could ask your students to write a short story and then illustrate it and draw it out. Um, you could also be asking students to perhaps create a part two for one of the Duolingo stories, for example, and kind of drawing and illustrating um, a part two to a Duolingo story or their own story or one of the Duolingo stories that are already created just so that they're interacting with the learning language um, in, in another way um, while on break and keeping that momentum going. So um, a little tip that I have. So as I mentioned with my Bouche de Noël project, Make sure that you keep in mind your students and their access to technology or other resources that they may need for a certain project. Um, not all students and their families are going to have the time, the money, or the access to technology necessary for these fun over-the-break activities um, or any activity that you may ask for them to do outside of the classroom. Um, so this may lead to stress, shame, an embarrassment for your students, which is of course um, not going to lead to, to effective learning for your students. So please do offer alternative activities that are more accessible to all. Um, for example, uh, you could offer less, less stressful ways to, uh, for your students to, to show off their learning. Um, students could simply you know, meet with you when they're back from break and maybe have a conversation with you in the learning language where they discuss a little bit about their break. Um, so you're offering them an opportunity to, um, to utilize the, the learning language, to show what they've learned, um, to interact with that language um, in a less uh, stressful way um, and not having to worry about um, asking their parents to, to buy some things or spend time with them to cook or um, having to utilize technology over the break, for example, that they may not have access to. Um, so just really, you know, be mindful of your students and their families, of course. And another uh, resource that we have that I want to share with you, here we are, um, I'm going to drop the link in the uh, chat as well for everyone. So I know this says my summer practice plan, and we're not quite there yet. Um, we're, we're not quite at, at summer yet. Well, most of us aren't, at least. Um, but you're able to edit this, you're able to, you know, call it whatever um, holiday break uh, practice plan that you'd like and edit this for the for the number of weeks or for the number of days that your students are going to be out. Um, so this is just a way for your, you to ask your students to, to set a goal, to stick to that goal and to track their own progress. So this is going to allow your students to take ownership of their learning. It's going to give them something to be proud of um, when they get back and they could show off their learning, show off their progress to you. Um, and it's even better if you do something like this um, and ask your students to be also writing down some new phrases or vocabulary that they have learned. So quick little recap. 
um, tap into the gamification of Duolingo. So be utilizing and be talking about those streaks, those challenges, those leaderboards, and rest assured that those kind of um, gamification techniques are going to get your students interested in learning. Um, next is to challenge your students. So ask them, who's going to keep up their streak? Who's going to beat me, the teacher at Duolingo, for example? Um, reward your students. Recognize their work when they are back. And then focus on other ways to learn. There are other ways to learn outside of the classroom and outside of you know, an application, such as watching a movie, getting family involved. Um, on Tuesday when we talked about this, someone mentioned as well, listening to music in the target language, listening to podcasts in the target language. These are all fun um, ways that students could be interacting with their learning language that is you know, not like homework. Um, another uh, tip that I have is to embrace the break and encourage relaxation. Build up that expectation with your students and tell them that they deserve this break just as much as you do as a teacher. Students need to be at their best to learn. They, therefore, they need this time to relax. And then lastly, be mindful of students and families. Offer alternative suggestions for learning outside of the classroom that won't be contingent upon technology or buying resources. So I'm curious now, um, let me know in the chat, what are some of your tips for school breaks? What are some things that, that you did to uh, prepare your students for school breaks, maybe leading up? Uh, what are your classrooms looking up like leading up to a break in preparation? Um, do you kind of wind down? I remember I would uh, typically watch movies in the target language, you know, the day before a break, just to kind of wind down, get students, um, you know, students are excited, teachers are excited about break. So um, it was always a fun way to interact with the learning language, but also in a stress-free environment. I would also sometimes have parties for my students, um, you know, I'd be sharing candy or, or other ways um, to kind of celebrate students and get ready for the break. So I'm curious, what are some of your tips for school breaks? What do you do? Do you uh, give your students homework over the break? Um, have you been the teacher who has given, you know, a packet of homework? No, no shame. If you have, you know, that's totally fine. You know, we all might give homework and then maybe regret it later or maybe you are a proponent of homework over break and that's fine too right there's there's a differing opinions and so no shame in that um so let us know a little bit about what you do over break so while you're writing that in the chat i'll share um we'd love a little bit of feedback so i'm really curious as in the future what kind of pd sessions that you would like to see um, would you like to, what would you like to see specifically for world language teachers? So let me know what you'd be interested in seeing in the future. Um, and we're also curious as what kind of Duolingo resources might be helpful. Um, I shared two resources with you today that we have created, um, but I'm really curious as to some future resources that you'd love to see that would be really helpful for uh, your classrooms and for your students. So let me know a little bit about some resources that you'd be um, interested in. So you're either able to share some of this feedback in the chat now, if you would like, um, you could always send us an email at educators at duolingo.com. Let me just uh, drop this email in the chat so it's easy to copy and paste if you'd like. Um, so feel free to send us an email at any time at educators at duolingo.com. Um, and you could also be joining us on um, in our educators network and sharing feedback there. So talking about the educators network. Um, so as I mentioned, it's a Facebook group full of educators from all over the world who are using Duolingo. Um, they're always sharing the ways that they're using Duolingo in their classroom. So hopefully um, others are getting tips and, and um, suggestions and um, different ways to utilize Duolingo in their classroom. Um, the teachers are regularly collaborating, sharing resources as well. Um, so please join us and stay connected. So I'm going to share that link as well. If you're not yet a member of our Educators Network, I'm going to share that link in the chat. Here we are. Uh, yeah, and if you are, if you're not on Facebook, feel free to collaborate with us and get involved with us on other social media accounts. So we have our Twitter account, we, Twitter account, we have TikTok as well, actually, we have Instagram, we have LinkedIn too. So feel free to, to join us on some other social media accounts. So I'm going to take a moment, pause through the chats. 
So when I was a student, I used to get huge amounts of summer holiday break work. So now as a teacher, I try to give them minimal work during holidays so that they can actually enjoy them rather than being stuck at home. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I know that it's it there's debate about around this, right? Whether or not to give your your students homework over the break. There's of course debate about it and um, differing opinions about it. Um, I'm definitely of the uh, of the idea as well. I uh, agree with you that that students should be enjoying their break, enjoying their time at home. Um, students deserve it just as much as teachers do, right? But we don't necessarily want them to stop learning, but perhaps just learning in different ways. I usually don't give homework over the break, but Duolingo makes it possible. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that. So I'm going to give some XP assignments, but won't be serious about it. So I do promise them some Duolingo swag for the effort. I love to hear that. Yeah, it's important to not be serious about it, right? To just uh, not, you know, cause any stress around it, not give, you know, a grade around it, for example, but rather just encourage it, make it fun, light. Um, and just a, a fun way to, to learn some more. So thanks for sharing everybody. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit about how to get some swag for your classroom. So you were just mentioning how you love giving Duolingo swag to your students. So you might be wondering, how do I get more swag to share with my students? So um, you have the opportunity to download this slide deck, schedule a PD session, invite attendees, and then we ask that you fill out two forms talking about the PD a little bit more. Um, and the first 50 teachers to download any of our slide decks, because I've been giving a lot of um, PD. I've given past sessions about student streak societies, classroom leaderboards, gamification in the classroom, utilizing Duolingo, et cetera. Um, so you're able to download any of these slide decks and give what I what I just gave to you um, to fellow world language teachers and we're going to send you a swag box that includes stickers a really nice insulated tumbler um, a really nice wool duolingo beanie as well as even more swag so it's a big swag box um, and so I can I can guarantee that you'll be super happy to receive it so some attendee recruiting ideas um, you could schedule a PD session with your department. If you have a world language department in your school, you're able to schedule um, a meeting with them and um, hopefully um, have some PD time with them. Um, if you don't have a world language department, you could post about it on Twitter or other social media accounts, tag us, we'll share it. Um, you could tr try to connect and network with world language teachers through social media. Um, and you could also be recruiting teachers from the educators network. So you're free to post in our educators network, recruit some teachers that would like to talk about um, Duolingo professional development. So I talked about all these PD events that I've held. Um, and so where do you download all these slide decks? So you could actually download them all in the educators network. This is an image as to where you could find them. We see the discussion tab right next to it is a guides tab. At the bottom, you're going to find um, a guide called professional development. There you're going to find all of my slide decks, um, as well as our presenter feedback form and our attendee feedback form. Our presenter feedback form is, of course, for you as a presenter. So after you've recruited teachers, you've given the PD, we're going to ask that you fill out this form with your address so I can send your swag, of course, as well as some details as to who attended, um, a picture, an attendee list if you have it, as well as a little bit of details about how it went. And then the attendee feedback form is that we ask that you provide this form to your attendees so you little, know a little bit about on their end how it went. Um, if you're not in the Educators Network and can't join for out of reason, please feel free to send me an email at educators at duolingo.com and I'll be happy to share any of the materials with you through there. So some work session ideas, if you, uh, this is about, you know, 15 minutes or so, 20 minutes or so of, um, of slides uh, talking about ways to avoid school break slumps. Um, but if you need to beef up this and a little bit and make it a work session. Here are some ideas. You're able to discuss these techniques from the session, brainstorm new ideas out loud together. You could be breaking out into groups to brainstorm uh, what these ideas might look like in the classroom. Um, and then a really important one, especially um, for department meetings, when you walk away with an actionable item done, right? You could create a new lesson plan around one of these ideas and be, uh, be utilizing it tomorrow in class, for example. 
So if you have any questions at all, please, as I mentioned, feel free to reach out to us anytime at educators at duolingo.com. Any questions at all? Um, you could also find perhaps some answers to your questions um, in our help center, or if you're a new teacher, we have a lot of um, articles under our help center to get you started. Um, and this can be accessed from the left-hand side of your Duolingo for Schools dashboard. Thank you, everyone. So I am going to stop recording now.